All right, House of Pain fans, we are back for season 13, and this was the premiere episode one, piece by piece. Overall, this was a pretty solid episode, if I'm completely honest here. Unfortunately, the B plot was the weak link, and it has to do with Floyd and Curtis once again trying to get their barbecue sauce to the next level, which, hey, nothing wrong with that. Always good to try to advance, especially if you are a... Uh, you know, owner of your own brand and uh, in this case product. Now, Wipe Me Down Sauce, which that name still is hilarious to me, has an opportunity, thanks to Floyd, to potentially be on a local uh, talk show or news show in the area. And the thing is, hey, this could be free publicity. We can use this chance to, you know, hopefully blow up. I mean, if the sauce makes a good impression when our ad runs during the actual program, maybe we can go, you know, national, national, you know, kind of um, one step at a time. But overall, the end result could take us to the next level where we want to go. Curtis is hesitant at first, like, yo, hey, I'm not going to go up there and give my recipe away, you know, for free, which makes sense. But the thing is, Floyd is slick with it. No, 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 no. See, we can have this little cooking segment. And then during the actual recipe, you know, explaining how you cook it and whatnot, you can just slightly mention, oh, yeah, when you're getting the ribs and the chicken ready, make sure, you know, you use a good amount of wipe me down barbecue sauce. It's delicious. You know, that kind of thing. So Curtis pretty much has the same attitude as always where this could be my chance. This could be my time to make it to the big show. Oh, yeah, my sauce is going to take to the next level. And Floyd calls him out for it all being about him as opposed to being we, because remember, it's supposed to be sauce bosses, not just sauce boss. And, you know, Curtis says, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's going to be chill. You know, it's, hey, hey, we both going to get our shot. However, I believe they're doing like, you know, um, a video call or something with uh, the station owner. And during the segment. Curtis does what Curtis does, it makes it all about him. Oh yeah, this use this sauce that I created, that I added the flavor to, that I own. And then when Floyd tries to, you know, say, well, you mean our sauce and whatnot. Oh yeah, well, yeah, this is my brand, but he didn't come in. Yeah, this is my partner in here, the, sauce, the other sauce boss, Floyd, but he really didn't come in here until the product was already established. So uh, their bickering leads to the, um, you know, the person on the other end of the line to shut off the call and, you know, in the midst of screwing up yet again, Curtis is saying, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, I couldn't have done this without you, yada, yada, yada. This was the weakest part. Hey, hey, it's always cool to see Floyd and Curtis interacting. Don't get me wrong. But this has got to be like the fifth time since the show has come back that we've seen these two bickering over their uh, barbecue sauce brand. Floyd rightfully calling out Curtis about it all being about him without giving him any credit. And then at the end of the episode, Curtis says, oh, I learned my lesson and we're going to work together to get bigger. And it seems like every time Floyd brings the opportunity for them to expand, Curtis ruins it. So yet again, it's just the same old, same old. So the main part of this episode focuses on Calvin trying to I don't know, reconcile or reform a connection, earn the trust of his son, Calvin Jr., to figure out what exactly is going on, why does he have this attitude, this, that, and the third. And this leads to just the best part. We get so many character interactions, you know, between CJ Jr., Calvin, Jasmine, Ella, and later on Miranda comes in. And I love how even though the Laura letter was an important part of the synopsis, for the season as a whole, we actually, it actually felt like the Laura stuff was on the back burner because I was talking with another fan of the show and I said, man, I wish that uh, the new House of Pain series did more multi-part episodes, you know, where maybe you can have a two or three parter. That way everything isn't just resolved in one episode, you know, because if this was one of the pro uh, previous seasons of House of Pain, like uh, season 10 or maybe even season nine, the issue with Laura and Calvin would have somehow magically got resolved in this particular episode but no based on the ending it seems like this is going to bleed over into episode two as well and well i don't even know if it's episode two i honestly couldn't tell you when laura is coming back but i love the fact that we left the door open for okay calvin has figured out the um the answer to the problem now the next question is okay how do i get this solution to laura so we can reconcile his main focus was on his son 
So the sneak peek we got of CJ and Calvin and Junior over at the condo was the first scene of the episode. Basically, CJ heard about the tension between the two from Curtis. He runs over and finds out what's going on. And it turns out, you know, I guess Tracy wasn't outside or maybe Calvin called Tracy and said, no, no, no. Uh, forget about what Junior said. He's on punishment right now. Because remember, the end of the finale was, I called mom. She's outside. She's going to pick me up. I'm going home. And then he just left. But no, uh, Calvin was chasing him down the street. And then CJ came and broke it up. So they went up to the condo. He learns about the whole thing where Junior threw the keys at Tracy. And, you know, he's talking with uh, Calvin about the situation. And he's telling CJ he has no idea what's going to be done. So the opening credits actually happen and. Oh, uh, I believe both Janine and Laura have been added to the opening title sequence. So that shows that they're definitely regulars in the season. Uh, I was actually watching the episode online. Somebody pointed this out to me because the stream I was watching kind of cut the theme song out. So I didn't catch it. But yeah, um, they're there. They are definitely there. Now from there, we go over to CJ and uh, Janine's house. And the cousins are all playing off screen. You know, Calvin Jr., uh, Miranda brings Christian. You got uh, Malik, M Malisa, um, Hayden, Jaden. Yeah, so there you go. That's five of them. But yeah, everybody's in the living room talking. It's CJ, Jasmine, Calvin, Calvin, and Ella just talking about the whole thing where Calvin Jr. isn't talking to Calvin. And they give him some tips about, you know, just parenting in general and how, look, you know what? You're dealing with a preteen or whatever because what did they say uh, Calvin Jr. hasn't hit puberty just yet so it's probably only going to get worse and from there you have uh, Ella who is giving some great advice because eventually Calvin Jr. does come down and um, he isn't really talking to his dad and then Ella's like you know back in my day you know the young people wouldn't not wouldn't not talk to their parents so she brings in a puzzle and then jasmine comes in sassy as ever oh puzzles are boring but i love it because the puzzle it really does take you back to a time before like electronics and whatnot where when it comes to entertainment you know families would get together put together puzzles or do crosswords things like that and while you're doing the puzzle you just talk so they kind of bond over uh one of the old church members who would ask Calvin if he prayed before dinner he's like well no because my mom's a good cook I don't have to pray and I just love little stories like that now that leads into Miranda coming over and talking about and, and this was a sneak peek I did the video on this already essentially she noticed on social media that Laura is you know changed her relationship status and she's not wearing an engagement ring anymore and she promises to help Calvin later at the condo decipher the letter to see exactly what's going on so during the uh, during the letter breakdown, Destiny and you know other women, if you're cheating, that was brought up, and then they come to find out. Wait a minute! First of all, Miranda got blocked by Laura on social media. I thought that was hilarious because <laughs> you know Calvin said, it, "Yeah, she blocked my phone number. She blocked me on social media." <laughs> and she wait, did she give the ring back? Wow, maybe I forgot that she left the ring because I'm thinking like, yeah, if if I propose to a girl and she breaks up with me for whatever reason, I'm getting that dang ring back. I'll tell you that right now. But um, Miranda finds out she's blocked and apparently she has, uh, you know, different accounts. And Cal was like, wait, so do you, you know, stalk my pages for those accounts? That's not important right now. Mm hmm. But she does find out that, OK, get your laptop. And then that's when they see the website. And then they realized Peanut was the one because he said, I, mean, I haven't used my laptop since Friday, but Peanut was the one that used the laptop. He was on that dating site and then he calls Peanut. You still got that door, doorbell uh, footage thing you have? And essentially, this is going to be his way to prove that, okay, Peanut was the one that used the laptop, talking to his girl, Destiny. Here's the video footage of, you know, the girl going over to his place. So basically, I'm in the clear. But now the big question is, Hmm, how do I contact Laura with this information to clear my name and save our relationship? Even though Calvin said it's life or death with the relationship. Honestly, I don't think that's no, I honestly, I no, I don't think so. Even Miranda didn't buy that. So then the final scene is, um, Calvin Jr. And, uh, Calvin coming back from somewhere. 
And I, th- I know earlier in the episode, Calvin mentioned going to the movies, but then Ella mentioned, I oh, don't take it to the movies because, you know, you want to be in an environment where you can actually talk to your son. So that's what brought about the puzzle. So it turns out, you know, he's supposed to go home to Tracy the next day. And Calvin mentions, oh, well, oh you want to go to the car wash with me? And how about this? I'll call your mom and let her know we'll just be running just a little bit late. It won't take that long, but, you know, they can spend more time together and talk. So then there's a knock on the door and it turns out to be a picture and it's a frame containing the puzzle that they put together. And there's a note from Ella, which was just beautifully read um, by Cassie Davis. And this was a fantastic episode. Like I said, the B plot with the sauce was a bit weak, but overall, everything else in the episode felt great. And I love that we're extending the Laura stuff into a future episode as opposed to just cramming it into this one. So great start to the season. I hope the rest of the season maintains this level of quality. And with that being said, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.